Hello and thank you for joining me. My name is Jesse. Thank you for joining me for this couple minutes of encouragement from the Word of God. Um, today I just was, was actually in, in service here at Pequa EC Church as Pastor Don was, was preaching and he mentioned back to my last sermon uh, the week before where we talked about God's faithfulness. And we talked about how through 2020 and all the difficult things that we went through, God remained faithful through it all. And sort of the tagline or the mission statement, the purpose statement of that message was having 2020 vision for 2021, and that's a cute little play on words with 2020 vision um, when we go to the eye doctor with the year 2020 and transitioning into 2021. But I wanted to, to was sort of struck by that. I wanted to maybe dive in a little bit deeper on what that means and and how can we take what all that happened in 2020? Because we all, whether you're on social media or whether you're just out in person talking to anybody, everyone agrees. There's no one that I know that said 2020 was a great year. No one that I know that had a smooth sailing 2020. We all faced obstacles, we all faced hardships. Of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, some of us lost our jobs, whether it's permanently or temporarily. Of course, more to, uh, even more personal things like having struggles with illnesses ourselves. It was a hard and difficult year. So my question is, how can we take all of those obstacles, all of those difficulties that we faced, use them as our 2020 vision, what we saw, what we experienced in 2020, and use them for our good, to grow as a person, to be a different person, to be created into a different person through Jesus Christ? How can we take them and better serve Jesus Christ? How can we better live as, as more perfect disciples, as more perfect images of Jesus Christ in 2021, in the new year ahead? And as I was doing this, I was God brought to mind James chapter 2, and specifically verses 14 through 26. And in here, James is writing about faith and deeds. He's writing about how if you have true faith in God, that will be evident in your lives. You will, if you have true faith that is alive, it will be alive. It will be lived out. And he gives two examples from our Old Testament of people who, who lived out their faith, who, whose deeds, whose works of their lives were evident. And this is not a works of, of earning your salvation, but it's true. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, just like if you're in love with someone, your life will show that you're in love with someone. If you're in love with Jesus Christ, your life will show, I'm in love with Jesus Christ. I want to do and serve for Jesus Christ. I want to live out my love for him, not in a way of, of earning anything, but in a way of just showing your love, because that's, that's how we love in our world. That's, as humans, how we're created to be. And in explaining this, James gives two examples. He gives Abraham, who was the father of Israel, the father of God's people in the Old Testament, the father, sort of the, the precursor to the Christians that we are now today, living under the cross and, and living under Jesus Christ. And he also uses a prostitute named Rahab. Now, it's interesting, first of all, the, the two people that James uses here. I mean, it's the father of, our, of Christianity. It's the father of God's people, Abraham. It's the guy that God brought all of this line, the line of David and the line that would bring Jesus Christ and then birth the church that we're now a part of. That's Abraham. And then on the other side, James also uses someone who was not a part of the, the family of God by birth, who was not living her life as a Christian at all. She was a prostitute living in a pagan land. Yet both of these people are examples of faith. Whether you're born into Christianity or not, whether you're born into a church-going family or not, or whether you're born into the complete opposite like Rahab, no matter how your life has gone, it is all about faith in Jesus Christ. And we know that both Abraham and Rahab lived out their faith and, and they found salvation in God. And these are the examples that Rahab and Abraham give. That's an interesting thing to think about. But what I want to think about is from their lives, they're, they're given as examples of living out your faith in their lives and what it's like to live out faith in God in the Bible. Yet we know, especially from Abraham's life, where we have a lot of details from his life, their life of living out faith in God was not without obstacle. It was not without difficulty. It was not without challenges. And some of them were brought on by themselves. Some of them were, were out of their control. We also know from Rahab, even though she had the moment when her city was about to be destroyed and her family was, was saved by God and was not destroyed in the family, I mean, it's still hard to see your entire family destroyed. I mean, Rahab's life certainly was not without obstacle and difficulty, even as she lived out her faith in God. And, and that's the same for us today. Just like Abraham and Rahab, our life, even living in, out our faith in God and Jesus Christ, will not be without obstacle. I think the question for us is, as we transition from a season in 2020 that was really difficult and move into a season that we don't know what it's going to be in 2021, into a, a new season, is how are we going to use those obstacles, those hardships, those challenges? How are we going to let God change us? 
because of it? How are we going to be different people? Will we remember through the obstacles that are sure to come in 2021? 2021, I'm sure, is not going to be a bed of roses rose and free of any challenges uh, for any of us. How can we learn and how can we grow? How through those obstacles and challenges can we continue to trust God deeper? Can we continue to trust that Jesus Christ is truly working all of this? Even the things that we determine that are challenging, even the things that are really hard. How can we trust deeper that God is working these all for our good? How can we, even in the hardest moments of life, pray, God, use me for your glory. Use this situation. Use my circumstances as hard as they might be or as good as they might be. Use them for your honor and to your glory. Use them to expand your kingdom. And all while praying, God, change me too. Change me. Make me into the man. Make me into the woman that you want me to be. Put me in the place with the people, in the relationships, in the church setting, in the job, in the geographical place that you want me to be. How can we, in the most difficult and challenging circumstances, in all the circumstances that we live out in our lives, how can we say to God, God, put me, use me in the way that you want me to be used. Put me in the places and make me into the person, the man or the woman that you want me to be. And I think that's what 2020 vision for 2021 can, can really be about, is how can we use that year of trials and difficulty, how can we use that season to grow closer to Jesus Christ? How can we use it to surrender our lives, everything about our lives, our person? How can we be changed by the year that was? How can we grow closer, more perfectly into the image of Jesus Christ? How can we be better disciples of Jesus Christ? How can we be better witnesses for Jesus Christ? So I think that was just my thoughts this morning as I was reminded of that little tagline, 2020 vision for 2021, and I was reminded of this passage in James 2. I um, hope it was, it was encouragement to me. It sort of brought me to life, the spirit moving, and I hope that it does brings encouragement. Hope that it also brings challenge in your lives as well as you go through this new year in 2021. And, and whatever it might bring, can our prayer always be, God, use me. God, make me more like 